Hi, I'm Ross Schaefer, and today in the Relevant Leaders Club, I want to talk to you about eliminating complacency in your organization. Uh, today, I want to give you a very simple solution to cure that creeping complacency that you may be feeling. And first, I want to assure you that most wildly successful companies battle this, so it's not just you. But I want to take a little quiz. Uh, do you notice your company isn't as reactive as it once was? Are your team leaders starting to take shortcuts instead of performing at their normal world-class level? Uh, are leaders complaining about burnout? Or do they get distracted every time there's a rumor of a merger or that some other company sees you as a takeover target? How about this? Are teams breaking off into factions in defiance of your core goals? Or worse, some of your key people are actually sabotaging workflows to slow things down to their comfortable pace. Look, if you sense this is happening to you, what can you do about it? Well, good news, the solution is really quite simple. Throw your culture in reverse and behave like a new startup company again. Because the way a startup does business is very different than where you are. Startups don't let distractions take away from their goals or their deadline. The energy of a startup is quite different than a legacy company. Startups are energized, they're, they're hungry. If you walk into a startup office, there are whiteboards full of ideas that might look like fantasy to you and I. Notes are posted on walls randomly. People talk louder, they laugh more, there's camaraderie. And this next element is shocking. Team members get together outside of work because they're usually friends. There's no question that the vibe of a startup is exciting and it's enthusiastic because there's a true sense of mission and ownership in a startup. If you want to inject that kind of feeling back into your organization, here are three cultural shifts that you can make. Number one, restore your corporate sense of urgency by reacting to market conditions as soon as you can. Startups launch in beta mode because speed to market is so crucial to them. I mean, look at the apps on your smart device. You, you heard about a cool app, you downloaded it, but you didn't perform your due diligence to make sure every single bug was worked out, did you? If it wasn't perfect, you, you knew you'd get an update from the cloud soon. So these days, think of perfection as a work in progress. Number two, re-examine all of your customer and client complaints because complaints are the first alert to how an organization leaks money. Whether you're B2C or primarily B2B, what step in the sales, order, and delivery processes are causing customers to complain about you? Complaints are important because in a recommendation economy, complaints can go viral so quickly. If a startup gets a complaint, they respond right now. They fix it now because they care about every single customer and they depend on every single customer to tell their friends so they can grow. And finally, uh, take a different approach to new ideas and risk because many legacy companies overthink risk to the point that good ideas often come to market too late. Now look, I'm not suggesting you be reckless, but I am saying that startups make bold decisions because they want your market share now and they're willing to be very innovative to get it. Okay, so how can you get buy-in from your teams to be more enthusiastic and nimble? You gotta bring the fun back, bring back the excitement of being a new company again. And how do you do that? I'll show you a short clip from a recent speech I gave to a half billion dollar company. Now this 32 year old company wants to behave like a startup again. We wanna behave like startups. 50 years, they're very successful by the way, as you know. And, uh, and so the chief operating officer stands at a podium he says, you know, I want to thank all of you for your hard work. We're making a lot of inroads into our customer engagement and everything that they go through when they come into one of our stores. And from now on, we will no longer be putting the back pain medications on the low shelves. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> for 50 years, you're, you're making these people go, hey, I got it. I mean, hang on. I got it. I got it. I got it. Ah, don't assume that you have a relationship. Have you ever had these situations where you're, you think you've got a, a reorder coming in and you're, you're talking on the phone to that person, maybe you haven't spent as much time with them as you should, uh, or you see them, you bump into them someplace and they're shaking your hand and they're smiling at you, but in their head, they're thinking, you're not getting another order from me. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. You assumed you had the relationship. You don't know John Magnuson, but you know his buildings. His buildings are Century Lake Field, Safeco Field, Seattle Art Museum, Music Experience Project. And he's not just popular here, he's popular all over the world. But look at his attitude. We have an active database of 5,000 clients, we think of them as our friends, yet we still send in the A-team and treat every pitch like it's our very first time. We may win from our past work, but we prefer to win from our enthusiasm.
As successful as they are, they take nothing for granted. They behave like a startup. I'm Ross Schaefer, and if you liked what you heard on this edition of the Relevant Leaders Club, please subscribe and tell your friends uh, so you can hear more of our growth tactics and innovations because we want you to become a better leader. And since this is a club, we would love for you to share your comments below so that other leaders in this club can benefit from your experience and your expertise. It helps the whole community. Now we do have other videos if you'd like, and you can certainly download my book, Are You Relevant, for free. I'm Ross Schaefer. We'll see you next time.